So let's consider silicon as our semiconductor. The valence electron, the number of valence electrons in silicon is 4. Let's say phosphorus atom forms our impurity. The number of valence electrons in phosphorus is 5. We add 3 phosphorus atoms to our silicon crystal. Now this is not a new compound but phosphorus atoms occupying some of the sites in silicon. It is not a new compound but it's still silicon but with some impurities. Here the impurity is phosphorus. So now phosphorus have 5 valence electrons. So phosphorus have 5 valence electrons. 4 of them will be in covalent bond with 4 neighboring silicon atom. As we can see here, the 4 electrons are in the covalent bonds with silicon atoms. But there is a 5th electron. The 5th electron is loosely bound to the phosphorus atom because it do not form the bond and already the phosphorus now have 8 electrons in its valence shell. So, so this 5th electron is loosely bound. So even at small temperatures like 50 to 100 Kelvin, these electrons are donated to the crystal. So we can say that when an electron is donated to the crystal, it moves to conduction band. So conduction band electrons can act as charge carriers. So phosphorus donated an electron to the system. So that's why we can say that phosphorus is a donor. So it donated an electron to the crystal. So it is a donor and it created an n-type semiconductor. So it is called as n-type because the number of electrons in the conduction band that means n here will be greater than number of holes. Okay, Because holes are generated, electron hole pairs are generated thermally plus these phosphorus atoms have donated some more electrons. So the holes are generated only thermally but electrons are generated thermally along with those donated by phosphorus atom. Since the number of charge carriers or the majority charge carriers in the system are electrons or negatively charged particles, we call it as n-type semiconductor. Now here, no holes are generated by the phosphorus atoms. This electron do not belong to any bonds. So we call the vacancy in a bond as a hole. So here phosphorus atoms do not contribute to generation of holes. It only contributes to generation of electrons. But still this phosphorus will gain a positive charge. Once it donates this electron to the crystal, the phosphorus atom will gain a positive charge. But these phosphorus atoms are held in the crystal by lattice forces. So these phosphorus atoms are immobile. Here in this case, we have added three phosphorus atoms. So even at 50 to 100 Kelvin, we get these three phosphorus can contribute three electrons to the system. So it can contribute this electron to the crystal and can generate a positive charge. These phosphorus ions now it have gained positive charge and these phosphorus ions even though they are charged particle but they are not charge carriers that means they cannot contribute to conduction. They are immobile and they are fixed in some point some locations in the silicon lattice. So we have seen that fifth group element like phosphorus can act as donor in the case of silicon. In the case of silicon we can have fifth group element as donor and they generate n-type semiconductor. And in an n-type semiconductor, the number of electrons will be greater than number of holes. So at thermal equilibrium, we use the notation n naught to represent electron concentration, that is conduction band electron concentration at thermal equilibrium. So in order to say that it is at thermal equilibrium, we use n naught will be greater than p naught, that is number of holes. Now the question is, is this silicon crystal with all these impurities charge neutral or is it electrically neutral? The answer is yes, it is electrically neutral. The argument is similar to that of silicon. That means even though there is an electron donated to crystal, there is a positive charge created in the phosphorus atom. So it is charge neutral or we can say n-type semiconductor is electrically neutral. And the name N, the N type, N doesn't come because it has negative charge. The name N type is simply because the majority charge carriers are electrons. So we can say that the majority charge carriers are electrons. That is because the number of electrons is greater than number of holes. So what essentially adding donor impurities does is that it generated additional impurity levels in the band structure. 
it generates additional energy levels in the band structure so here we have an energy level addition of phosphorus let's say have generated additional energy level in this location now the electrons in this energy level needs very little energy to move to conduction band now we will discuss about fermi level later just leave keep that aside so adding phosphorus creates extra electron energy levels so this energy level the electrons in this energy level can move to conduction band really easily with very little energy now we can now we can explain the same phenomenon using bonds as well as band structure in the case of p type material as we are going to see next it is easier to explain using band structure